This video will show you how to use an RGA in the helium leak check mode. I know that I have a vacuum leak on this chamber because I added a manifold to test some Balzer's leak valves and then after that I could only get into the mid to high 10 to the minus 6 tor range. I'm going to use an SRS100 RGA in the helium leak check mode along with some helium gas to locate the vacuum leak. Helium is used for leak checking because it's a noble gas and it also has a very small molecule. Our vacuum gauge is in the 10 to the minus 6 tor range, which is how I know I have a leak because by now I'd normally be down in the low 10 to the minus 7 tor range. I've rigged up a small 1 16th inch tube that's connected to a helium bottle and regulated to just a few psi of helium. The small tube will help me to localize the leak. I've turned on the SRS100 controller and opened the RGA software and started a wide scan to make sure that the RGA is working properly. The RGA uses a tungsten filament to ionize the gas in the chamber, and so since my vacuum is in the 10 to the minus 6 tor range, it's safe to operate the RGA. If the leak was in the 10 to the minus 2 or 10 to the minus 3 tor range, you'd want to use isopropanol or methanol to find a leak. Okay, let's put the software in the helium leak check mode where it will display the relative level of only the helium peak. We see the helium peak is increasing slightly. This is just from the filament warming up. It's not due to putting helium on the outside of the chamber because we haven't done that yet, but it does give us a, a, a baseline. Okay, now we'll inject some helium into the inlet of this Balzer's leak valve. Okay, there. Now you can see that there's a huge increase in the helium signal. and it continues to increase. Okay, now I'm going to pull the helium away and you notice that it's still increasing. That's because the ion pumps have a very hard time pumping helium, so it's going to take some time for the ion pumps to to pump this helium out of the chamber. But we can see that the slope is starting to level off, so I, I'm not putting helium in anymore. I pull it away. Okay, so since we know that the leak is on the inlet of that Balzer's leak valve, it's quite likely that the set screw just needs to be adjusted on the leak valve. And to do that, we'll turn it slightly clockwise. Um, we have a, a blog post on our TechSpot blog that shows how to do this procedure with the Varian leak valve, and it's the same procedure for a Balzer's. Okay, so I'm going to loosen it just a tad counterclockwise just to see what the effect is. Okay, so that does prove there's a leak there. Now I'm going to turn it clockwise just a little bit, about two or three degrees. And you can feel the torque as well. It's not very much. It's just a, just several inch pounds, which is in the manual for the, the balsers. But basically, you just want to tighten it by a couple degrees. Um, okay, now it's starting to drop down. It's going to take some time, but the leak has been sealed. And you see that slope. It's just going to take quite a while actually for the ion pumps to pump this out, but the uh, that drop off is about normal. Okay, to visit us at our website at rbdinstruments.com and then you can check out our TechSpot blog for more information on surface analysis systems and vacuum in general.